Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Friday live stream. So we got a lot of things to cover. So let's just jump right in. So today, uh, I don't know if you guys realize this, but uh, there was a nice little moment where we actually hit 69K. Or excuse me, 70K. I stand corrected. And uh, this happened for a very brief amount of time. And of course, then it came down. But uh, that's just the normal things that are going on in the market. So just for posterity, just so you know, right now we're at 60729 uh, I don't know why I'm actually telling you this because I'm sure you've been checking your portfolio probably madly today as you see all the gains that you've gone through. So congratulations for getting to the bear market. That's what we have. But today I want to talk about just real quick, and then we'll get into the Q&A part, which I think was everybody's favorite part for the whole show. It's just to talk about this global beckoning that's coming through for BlackRock. And this was broken by Bitcoin Archive. And it states that BlackRock has filed with the SEC that it will buy Bitcoin ETFs for their own funds. So as we know, BlackRock is uh, the largest the largest uh, institution or asset manager on the planet. It has roughly over 10 trillion assets under management uh, right now and growing uh, by the day or by the hour, it seems like. And what they're going to do is they're going to say, okay, not only are we, are we going to have a spot Bitcoin ETF here in the States, but for the other ETFs that we have for our global partners, we are going to actually buy Bitcoin and stick them in those ETFs. I think it's very interesting. And I'm just thinking to myself, how much longer before Bit or BlackRock has a million Bitcoin by itself? Because it seems like that's pretty much where we're going. Now, of course, they don't personally own it. That is for uh, their members or for the people that are actually uh, investing with BlackRock. But you get my drift. It's under this one umbrella. And it's just uh, it's amazing how things uh, speed up. Anyhow, they state that uh, another, another 20 trillion of funds use their Aladdin platform to make portfolio allocations. BlackRock has said that the optimal Bitcoin allocation is 84.9% of a portfolio. Let me read that again because I had forgotten about this. This was actually put out. I, I thought it was fake when I first heard it. This was a while ago. But it did state, BlackRock has stated in the past that the Bitcoin allocation should be a <clears throat> crazy 84.9% of a portfolio. Now, here on this channel, I'm not, a, I'm not telling you to do Michael Saylor. It, just go everything all in. But uh, it's uh, paid off quite handsomely as compared to uh, traditional equities. Well, except for NVIDIA and stuff like that. Uh, also for precious metals and for just like the regular S&P 500. So on that point, I can I can get behind that. And they state, of course, few will do this, but we have the world's biggest fund manager telling investors to get off zero. Ernst & Young estimates $200 trillion of institutional assets could not touch Bitcoin until an ETF was approved. And of course, that's where we're going right now. And it's just great. And everybody's happy. This was actually broken by uh, Macroscope. They said this is uh, just to dig into it a little bit better. A new filing by BlackRock late this afternoon. As I've been saying, you're going to see a lot of this in coming months. I have to agree here. I believe that this is going to keep happening. Different organizations, even Vanguard, is going to come in and start to say, you know what, uh, since this is the best performing ETF of all time, maybe we'd like to get that. It's amazing how institutions of Wall Street, they don't want to be the first one. But boy, they do not want to be the last. And when they see all the money that's coming in, it's kind of hard to not get FOMO even on that side for the smart money. I don't believe there's any really smart money out there. I think it's people just going through the same cycles. Anyhow, this was filed today by the BlackRock and it states the fund may acquire is cut off. So this is what they said. The fund may acquire shares in ETPs that seek to reflect generally the performance of the price of Bitcoin by directly holding Bitcoin ETPs, including shares, of a Bitcoin ETP sponsored by an affiliate of BlackRock. So these are the things that are going on. And that's just one side. There was another story a couple of days ago that I just, I didn't uh, really dive into, but it's starting to kind of make sense now as we see more of these organizations coming in. This was uh, from Arizona. And uh, we have a, uh, a pension, not a pension crisis, but we have different problems with retirement accounts, especially state funded retirement accounts being underwater. And what the Arizona State Senate decided, this was a couple of days ago, they said, what we'd like to do is we'd like to start to monitor Bitcoin ETFs and other digital asset ETFs and consider including a digital asset ETF in our or their investment portfolios. Now, again, as these ETFs start to 
massively dominate as they're doing right now, you're going to see more and more of this because a lot of these institute, a lot of these, excuse me, retirement accounts that are underwater, are like, how are we going to pay these people back? Maybe we should get into something that is a appreciating asset instead of going to some crazy nonsense that's out there. So, uh, you know, this is uh, good. We'll see how it actually works out. But then this leads me to some of my last points, which is this. Bitcoin units. This is from heyapollo.com. And you can just see over here, and we've talked about this many times, but it's just amazing to me that this in light blue, the 619,000, excuse me, 619,000 Bitcoin units, that's just whole Bitcoin, was owned by Grayscale on January 10th, going all the way to, well, this is not right. Because March 5th, you've only got 409,000. So they lost 200,000 in roughly two months. Yeah, yeah. And it went to who? BlackRock and Fidelity mostly. Let me, let's refresh this because I know it's not that because I know today's the seventh, that's why. Let me refresh this and see what we get. I guess everybody's looking at this website as well. All right, that's better. So, geez, even, okay. Well, that makes sense because everything's flowing from Grayscale. Now they're at 400,000. And again, 37, and again, we're almost, I just did this like three days ago and they were just over 700,000 total. Now we're almost hitting 800,000 in these centralized institutions, which is fine. Well, again, the Fidelity is the BlackRock, the Arcs and everything else, almost 800,000. It's pretty fast. And it's only going to accelerate, I think, as we start to see, because again, people are starting to look at this, especially people with uh, lots of funds and say lots of money, lots of assets under management. Go, you know what? That's doing pretty well for us. We want to be a part of that. So that leads me to this. If everything's doing so well, who's selling? I mean, there's some people that are always going to sell at 69K a couple of days ago. People sold, right? And the bears and the bulls got wrecked if they were shorting and longing. Geniuses. That's fine. I'm not that guy. But I just want to say congratulations because I've never seen this number. This is from Into the Block, and it says very clearly, holders making money at current price. For Bitcoin, if you hold Bitcoin right now, 100% of you are in profit. At profit is zero, out of profit is zero. Remember this day, because it doesn't happen too often. When we start to see fluctuations, that's of course, these numbers will of course increase, decrease on the ins and outs, but today's a great day. Everybody's in profit, congratulations, you did what you were supposed to do. But then over here, the composition by time, by time held, it hasn't, ah, let me go back. It hasn't changed. It has not changed. It's always 69%, roughly 69, 70% for one year. People have held one year or longer. 24%, one to 12, and only 7% for less than a month. These less than one monthers are going to come over to the one to 12 monthers because they're going to start to hold on. And you're going to see less and less. And the same thing we've all, what everybody says just about, which makes me kind of, not now I have to really think about it, is of course, we have so much so, so much demand and so little supply and it starts to just dry up more and more and more. So there's those parts. And then there's another thing that always uh, gives me a little bullish vibes. And this just happened again. And we talked about this two weeks ago. We talked about this four days ago and this happened again. The treasury, that is Tether, just minted another billion dollars of USDT. Now, like I said before, Tether Treasury is just like the Fed. Well, the Treasury for the US Treasury, essentially. They print Tether, the Treasury, the US Treasury prints dollars. Roughly the same thing, just that Tether has to back it up. Is it backed up? Well, there's been audits. And every time that I think that there's something fishy with Tether, it proves me wrong every single time. So again, once they this actually happens, it seems like there's a rally between 24 hours and roughly six days or so. And every single time it happens, I'm not gonna say that uh, that was leading the charge for us to hit 70K, but it's uh, kind of eerie how every time Whale Alert comes out and says it's a billion dollars minted, we go up like crazy. Links in the description, you can follow those guys and check them out. And having said all that stuff I just said, what are the biggest gainers today? <laughs> By percentage, Kermit, Doji, Doge, and Nixia AI. And of course, Nixia AI went up because why? Because it has two really important letters next to it. AI, artificial intelligence. We don't care what it really does. And maybe it's awesome. But if you got AI in your name, it seems like you're going up. 
Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Just wanted to bring it to everybody's attention. It is a great day. I'm very happy. It's just that some of these things, I'm like, that's kind of screwy. That's just what it is. And oops, lastly, uh, altcoins. So I know we talk a lot about, about Bitcoin on here because it's the king and it's uh, most appreciating. It's the most exciting right now, right? And I think it's the safest, it's your safest bet in the most volatile asset class. It's just true. However, remember how we front ran BlackRock. We front ran all the institutions. We got in before Michael Saylor. Congratulations if you've been here that long. Now, of course, we start to look at altcoins at some point and say just to ourselves, maybe this could be the next thing. So I don't have the answers for everything. And when I find good information, I want to pass it on to you. So there was this piece put out by Coin Bureau, friend of the show guy, and he's got uh, his analyst. And what they did, this is pretty good actually, is they came up and they said, here's our latest top picks for some different, not picks, but just information about some of the top uh, altcoins that are out there. And they went over Celestia and you can see the table kind of SWE, Stablecoin, Ordinals, Jupiter, Mantel, Manta, Worldcoin, Stacks, and some other stuff. And I read through this and it's just really well put together. I like it. It's free. You can go to this, this piece. Hold on. I don't think I actually put this in. Let me put this in real quick so everybody can find it. All right. Coin Bureau article. Alts. Do this now or I'll forget. Okay. Links in the description now. And, uh, it was a great read. It's very interesting. I like this stuff. So if you're like, what is going on in the altcoin world? What's out there? What's the new stuff? Check that out. And also, if you're um, looking to go even deeper, Coin Bureau Club. I don't know what the heck this is. I don't know what cell frame is. I don't know what jackal. I don't know what this stuff is. Let's see all. But I, uh, like I said on, on the NFA live show, I think... I'm very thankful that he put out this video on Fetch AI. You'll know what I'm talking about when you watch it. On that one, and there was another good one that I watched. Uh, that's not it. Akash. So two AI plays. I just thought it was interesting and deep in place. <clears throat> Anyhow, right now, if you're like thinking to yourself about uh, altcoins, maybe that'd be something to check out. There's a link in the description for Coin Bureau Club. That is a paid service. That is not an affiliate link. <clears throat> you can sign up check it out for for a month and see how it goes but i'm telling you there's some things that i can do and some things i can't do i can't put that much effort and resources to do the research that that guy and his team do it's fantastic and uh most of these things these guys don't own so it's unbiased and i trust that so check that out anyhow and then lastly lastly i'm gonna ask you guys what, what you want to do Let's, let's do this. <clears throat> do you guys want to go and do a Q&A right now? Or do you want me to talk about layer twos, <clears throat> the prices that it costs, and or uh, how to use layer twos to buy things on DEXs? So what do you want to do? Do you guys want to do a Q&A? Or do you want to do a layer two thing? Because there's always this thing about people say, well, why are you using Ethereum in layer one solution? Why don't you use a layer two? So much cheaper. What are you, a moron? <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> All right. Layer twos, layer twos. Talk about AI coins. I'll tell you this, that video I watched on Fetch AI, it was very eye-opening and it made me uh, not want to be in Fetch AI, even though you, we all should know by now that it's not so much about, it's not about the tech, it's not about that stuff. It's all about the hype and greed and speculation. And that's what's really pulling the markets right now. If there's a great project and it has hype and speculation and greed, so much the better. But a lot of times it's just high speculation and greed. Layer twos, are you sure? Layer two and amp. Amp, baby. That's right. Layer two. All right. Let's do this. If there's something you can't see, let me know. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, you're right. You're right, Minute. So this was a, a, a tweet that I saw. I thought it was hilarious. Solana, it's, it's from BonkBot. Solana is inevitable. It's 
Welcome to Solana and ETH. But there was this comment that it pulled me to it. It's from uh, <laughs> Blockmaster Luke. He says, ETH is for the rich. I can't be a degen on ETH with 10 bucks, 9.99. I thought to myself, I wonder if that's true. I wonder if you really, I mean, can you, maybe you could do that in layer twos. We know this. We sure as heck can't do that in layer ones, right? So let's check this out. So I'm going to use CoinGecko and go from here. So let's just say like, like for instance, if we, hold on, come on, come over here. I'm going to look at categories, click on categories. And then you got dog thing or meme. I'm going to click on meme. Uh, get rid of this. I don't need this. Nah, nah. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to figure out some of the better ways to buy this stuff. Dogecoin is Dogecoin. It's a it's a meme. It is actually a fork. Dogecoin is a fork of Litecoin. Litecoin is a fork of Bitcoin. And it's been around since 2014. I don't know if you knew that, but it's been around for a long time. It's been in the top 35 in its entire existence almost. So don't fade Dogecoin. It's a great one. Shiba Inu. 139%, I don't know. But let's just take the example of Pepe, right? So we're going to click on Pepe. And what I'm going to show you right here is when you go to CoinGecko, there's these three dots right here. You see these three dots? You're going to click on this, and it's going to show you all the other types of Layer 2s or even Layer 1s that this is on that you can buy on and use it that way. And the reason why I say this is because First of all, if you go to click on markets here, this will show you where all the Pepe coins are. And when I click on markets, I'm like, oh, look at that. It's on Binance and OKX and KuCoin and Bybit, BitGet and such, such and so forth, and Bing X and Uniswap. Sweet. So I don't have access to that stuff because I'm an American. It's just how it is. Uh, but I can use Uniswap, which is pretty great. So let's just do this. First of all, I'm going to see that contract address right there. So what, to make sure that I get the right one, I'm going to copy that, right? And then what I want to do is I want to go to, let's just go to Uniswap. I'm going to click on Uniswap. And I'm going to click on Start Trading. Because I don't want to go to the, the, the fake Uniswap site where it connects to my hot wallet and it drains my entire hot wallet. I don't want to do that. I'm not a big fan of getting everything drained. So like this one, Select the token. So search the name or paste the address. I could put in Pepe, but I don't know if it's going to get the right one. I don't know. I'm just going to do that. And that's the contract address. That's the right one. Cool. So let's do ETH. Let's just, I just want to show you the prices right now. Oh, geez, I'll leave. 78 bucks. First of all, can you see that swap? You guys can all see the swap. Great. I'm going to click on swap. You see right here? Gas fees, 44 bucks. I don't want that. I don't want that. Let's see if it's still that bad. Let's see. You can see that. The next thing you're probably not going to be able to see, which is my MetaMask wallet's going to come up. You can't see that. But I will just tell you that, sweet Mary and Joseph, the total here for the amount plus the gas fees is 122 bucks. Estimated fee is actually 63.23. So I'm going to reject that. You can't see it, I know. So I don't want to use that. Let's go back here. Okay, okay. So remember how it said, mm -mm -mm. Pepe, there it goes. Remember how it's over here? See that right there where it says Arbitrum? Arbitrum one. Okay, well, it's an Arbitrum. That sounds pretty good. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go back here. And of course, you're going to have to have your MetaMask all set up to make sure you have Arbitrum and have Ethereum on and all that good stuff, right? So I'm going to, let's see. Uh -uh. See right here when I click on that, and it's going to ask me. You can't see that well. Let me blow this up. That ah, doesn't go through. See right here in the upper right hand corner, there's a little drop down, and it asks you to pick like what layer do you want to deal with, or what layer two or layer one. Let's try Arbitrum. And then my MetaMask is going to ask me to switch the network. Great. Now I'm going to search by using that Arbitrum address of Pepe. All right, that's Pepe. Actually, no, what I want to do is this. I want to buy Pepe with Arbitrum. And I've got a whopping 11, oof, I got 11 
Arbitrum. That's it. It's pretty sad. Well, I said, that's what you want. You don't want a bunch of crypto tokens on your hot wallet so you can get drained. That's not how it works. So let's just do this. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to put five Arbitrum. And that's, it's roughly about two bucks right now. All right. And that'll be $10, sir. And the gas price, you can see right here, is a buck 22, which is not bad because I did this before and it was like 327. So I'm like, eh, all right. So Arbitrum, I'm going to be able to use that. I'm going to click on swap. It's going to say the same thing, sign and swap. It's going to ask me for first a signature. You can't see this because it's my MetaMask wallet. Let's see if that's true. All right. So the fee just went up to $3.42. You can't see that. That can't be right. The total is two fifty three. Yeah, total. Amount plus gas fee. Eek. So unfortunately, that's a lot better than the 59 bucks. Can we all agree on that? Yeah, that's true. And that's pretty much how you can use layer twos to make things cheaper. But here's the thing. I need to really ask everybody this. Are we all going to do that? Are the normal people gonna that are coming in going, you know what, I wanna bridge all this and I wanna do it this way and I wanna save it so I can spend $3 or $2, whatever it is for one transaction. I'm just asking the question because that's how you do it. Of course, now your Pepe will be an Arbitrum and you can buy it, you can send it, you can do whatever you want to, you can sell it for profit, same prices essentially. The question that you're gonna have with this is, of course, how much liquidity is on there? Because I did this today in the morning and I try to do it on a whole different host of L2s. Some worked, some didn't. And the reason was is because there was no liquidity in the different DEXs that I choose. So the question is, do you want people to do that? Or is there an alternative that's a lot better? Me personally, I don't think people want to do that. I could be wrong, but let me know in the comment section. And that's it for that piece. And that's it for today, actually. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.